Hello everyone, Sergio Gaspar with 610 Motors bringing you this short video on a post repair inspection we performed on this 2019 Toyota 86. Um, brief history on this vehicle. This customer came in around late August. He was going around interviewing facilities uh, to see who he wanted to repair his vehicle. Uh, we explained to him the repair process. We showed him how we do things, walked him through it, and ended up choosing us to be his elected repair facility. Uh, we brought it in, we looked up the Toyota repair procedures, we did a proper teardown of disassembly and blueprint, and came up with a $12,000 repair bill, more or less, and his insurance company, MetLife, came at us with a $6,000 and change repair bill. We couldn't come to an agreement. I sent numerous emails and phone call attempts to negotiate with them and explain to them the, the reasoning for some of the procedures we were billing for and whatnot, and they just blatantly said, we don't pay for those repair procedures. Uh, it's funny because in the end, their contracted insurance repair facility was paid for those same procedures they denied us on. So I don't know the legality issues on that, but whatever. Um, so let's get right to it. Uh, he, upon picking up the vehicle, he immediately saw some paint defects. And then he took his vehicle to the tint facility to get tinted, and they pointed out some more defects. So he called us last Friday and requested to drop it off Monday so we can overlook the whole repair and see what's going on. So he dropped it off Monday, we pulled it up, we did a pre-wash on it, a pre-scan, and did a visual inspection on this. So getting right into it, the first immediate flaw, like he noticed, the tin shop noticed, were the paint defects. That's usually one of the first things everybody noticed are the paint defects. You can take a look at this hood over here, and there's just, the amount of dirt and defects in the clear coat is unreal. There's absolutely no standard operating procedures put into that facility to keep uh, quality in their overall finish. There's complete negligence. This is unreal. We all get dirt in the paint. That's inevitable. There are just precautions necessary you take to keep it to a minimum. And then in the end, you perform what is a finish sand and buff operation where you would go through and sand the little nibs, polish the whole panel and whatnot. Um, this is a, a procedure we built for. We couldn't come to an agreement on with his insurance, yet they paid their facility and they didn't even perform it. So that's the first issue. There's a lot of paint defects all over this whole side. The hood, bumper, lip, fender, door, quarter panel. This whole side of the vehicle was painted full of defects. Um, next issue while we're still on the paint uh, is the tape lines. There's tape lines at every single area of this vehicle. Uh, in here, I don't know if you can catch it on camera, we have some severe tape lines on the inside here. There's actually still primer overspray. I don't know if you get this angle here. You can catch the dry spray all inside this pillar. Very poor refinish technique. This, per every single major paint manufacturer, clear coat is to be extended to the edge of the panel. So this panel would have clear coat extended all the way to the inside. They didn't do that here, and you can see it. Just poor, poor uh, refinish techniques. So we have the tape lines. The rocker area in this area, besides all this dry spray and poor refinish, there's actually a clear blend in this area. This is not recommended by any major paint manufacturer, and, and Toyota actually has a statement that they don't approve of these methods. Um, in this B-pillar area, there's two labels that were here before. There's an airbag label and there was a, a port loading label, I believe, a GVWR label possibly. There's two labels here, they're missing. They were never put back on. Uh, the shop actually built for one of the labels. It, it, none of the labels are here. Um, the VIN anti-theft labels. There's one supposed to be on the replacement door, the replacement fender, and the replacement quarter. None of those were put back on. So if this car would ever get stolen, God forbid it ever gets stolen, these doors are on the market, there's no trace to it. They don't have the labels on here. Um, labels. So we have the seam sealer also. I don't know if you get a video of that in the trunk. There was seam sealer applied to the inside of this trunk area. Uh, it was applied very poorly. 
There's no attempt to match the OEM appearance, let alone the proper color. They used the gray seam sealer instead of the beige. Um, if you go back into there, go back into there, there's actually weld burns. This quarter panel was welded on. You can actually see they left a lot of bare metal spots, untreated metal. Those weren't treated. They should have been epoxied and, and e-coated after. Um, while we're on the welding, this quarter panel, per Toyota's recommendations, right along this wheel arch right here, there's supposed to be 10, 10 welds. They have seven out of 10 welds. Um, along the B-pillar weld flange right here, they have 17 out of 19 that Toyota recommends to reinstall. Um, it, another thing that we couldn't tell, right back there in those beer spots, it, uh, Toyota calls for weld through primer. They build for it. I don't see any evidence of the weld through primer being applied. I can't be certain, but I don't see it. Another thing here, uh, per the Toyota repair procedures, the vehicle is supposed to be sectioned at this location. They're about four inches back from that location. Um, I mean, I can understand a half inch, quarter inch, more or less, but they're, they're four inches back. There's, there's pictures of exactly where to section it, which leads me to believe that they didn't pull any repair procedures. Um, well, through primer, right at rocker section short. The underside of this right rocker area, there is a, a chip guard application that's put on. This is to help with sound deadening, chip protection along the chassis of the body. Uh, right here from where they section back, it was never reapplied. Um, there's repairs. This quarter panel was damaged in this area. So there's repairs to the outer wheelhouse on the, on the underside here. Um, the, these repairs are very poorly done. There was no metal finishing techniques used at all. Uh, looks like he just whacked it with a hammer. Uh, quite honestly, you'll see in the photos, he jeopardized the structural integrity of that panel. It's another safety issue. Uh, the right fender trim has some damage here. This could have been after, but I highly doubt it. Uh, there's a rub mark on that interior of the quarter panel there. On the interior of the quarter panel trim. He, he doesn't use his back seat. Nobody uses his back seat, so you can get a picture of that right there. You can see it. He was concerned about that right here on the bottom. See it? That rub mark? Um, front bumper emblem. They paid for it. They wrote for a new one. It, it doesn't look like it was replaced. It looks like it's taped on there. You can kind of tell. Uh, the right fender. There were 86 emblems here. The vehicle owner requested not to be put on. They still built for him. They should have gave him the emblem at least. On the rear bumper over here. The rear bumper. There's supposed to be a clear vinyl protector with the 86 logo on here. They built for it. They built for the part twice and labor on it once. It's not here. Uh, they built for a post-scan operation. We did a pre-scan before doing our, our uh, inspection on it, and there's tons of codes relating directly to the repairs performed. So it leads me to believe they didn't perform a proper post-scan or the calibrations necessary after repair. Basically, to wrap this whole video up, which we're just trying to bring awareness to the consumers, to the public, is that these insurance recommended facilities are not in it for your best interest. These guys aren't performing proper repairs, as you can see. They are trying to do production repairs. They want to get these things in and out. They want to use cheap parts. They don't want to put all the parts on. They don't build for certain procedures because they're not doing these procedures, as you can see which in turn keeps the insurance company's profits high. That's why they send you to these shops. Um, we don't do that here at our facility. We try to perform repairs as best we can to our human ability while following OEM recommended procedures and just keeping quality at an all time high. That's, it's basic, it's simple. And that's what we try to do here. So if you have a repair that was done recently, if you have any questions relating to the repair, you want some professional's opinions, uh, give me a call. We can set up a free visual post repair inspection. We can do a walkthrough. I can educate you 
And, and like I said, we're just trying to bring awareness to the public and to the consumers. Give me a call if you have any questions, 610-625-9330. Check me out on Facebook, check me out on Instagram. You can message me anywhere, I get back to everybody. Um, let me know if you need anything.